All right, let's set the stage for episode three. This is the 4.8, and this is the sloppy stage two camshaft from Elgin Cams. It's only like 230 bucks shipped. These are pack 1218 springs, 130 bucks. And they're gonna go into this pig. And I'll just show how I do that, even though I've shown it before. We'll show it all over again. All right. Ready to go? <laughs> so we'll just blitz everything apart and put the cam in. And then we'll do valve springs afterwards. Well, we gotta release the tension on the tops anyway. So we'll just do that, do the cam, and then do the valve springs next. So, wait for the covers. Yeah, not much snot. I've actually never opened this 4E. Ever. Smells good. It smells good in here. Pull the lifters, pull the push rods and the rockers out. It's funny how the one side is always cleaner than the other. One push rod on each side is slightly worn. You can see uh, they get like a little wear pattern in them. Sometimes I swap them out. Not every time. Pull the accessories off. Only two bolts in there. Perfect. All right. Should we see if? Oh yeah, three eighths. Death smell. Good. Nothing came pouring the fuck out. And then we'll go right for the crank bolt and see if I don't have a lot of experience with this. I traded, I traded, I got rid of all of my other stuff that was mismatched and bought pretty much Milwaukee everything. That's a beast. That is a beast. And my OTC puller. 
is also worth its weight in gold. I've used it one million times. Push rod on it. Now, if you have seen this before, this is where I'll usually flip the motor over and do it upside down so the lifters can't fall. But I'm going to show you the dowel method way this time, just for fun. Just for shits and grins, there's the timing mark. So then, spin the cam around to push the lifters up. Then you take some 5 16 dowel rods, 
slide them in here. And supposedly they keep enough tension on the lifters. Still makes me nervous. So, then you play what's called uh, lifter roulette. You yank the cam and put the other one in. New one. Whatever you do, don't look at your cam bearings. If you look at them, they'll be bad. If you don't look at them, they'll be fine. Now, as long as there are no cam bearings on your cam, you're fine. <laughs> if they come out with the cam, you're not fine. Alright, my water pump bolts back out. And then another quick thing you can do is, after the cam is swapped, you can look over the stock cam and see if there's any lobes that are excessively worn and that might lead you to a bad lifter one of those things you can catch ahead of time every lobe on here looks pretty normal yep normal amount of wear so that's it So now, put the can plate back on. Pull the bolts back in. Don't have the greatest dexterity with these thicker gloves. Bolt might help you. So the cam. I'll wind up this tooth a little bit over. That uh, screws me. It doesn't screw me bad, but it's annoying. Once this drops down in here, it catches the teeth. You can't really pull it back out nice. Okay. Tooth on the right. Drop that guy on there. Whoops. This will help you when you're trying to line up the pin. Screw this into the cam. Pull the cam out. Line your cam up. It looks pretty close to dot to dot. So what we're going to do is put all the bolts in. Tighten it up, spin it around, and make sure it keeps lining up. Check it with a flashlight, too. Yep. Looks good. 
good enough for me. And then I always like the RTV the corners here. All RTV, I'm even though I'm gonna change this pan out with my pan, because my pan has the turbo drain on it. It's easier to just swap the pan than it is to drill another one. Nice to have a not drilled pan in case you have another project car. Drop a little bit of this stuff in the corners. Like that. Cap on nice. Next up, we will show you the easiest way to reinstall a balancer, which is to hit it with a propane torch till it's hot and drop it in place. We're gonna get some welding gloves on. I'll start and stop so I have a good. All right, roll one. There, so you can see this. I don't burn my cardboard. All right, check this out. We're gonna come off the heat and go straight onto the motor. It's gonna go clunk right on. Just like that. Up, straight on, no problem. Let me take the bolt. shit out of the bolt and that's it. And you're done. Your shit has a cam in it already. Easy, right? Guys, would you feast your eyes on this awesome shit I just made?
turn down my regulator to about 50 pounds. Let me see how this works. Oh shit! It works. Let me get my magnet. Uh... Uh... What do I do? I gotta give it some slack. I see. Well, kind of works. I got the stock spring out. I'll throw it in the trash. I'll grab a pack. Drop it right on there. I got a couple threads on here. My threads are all chewy on this eBay valve spring tool, which I like. It just takes a while. So I figured, what the hell, I'll try to weld this thing to it and see, you know. Let me try to, uh, what do I have on here, a 13? Let's do this. Get a couple threads and make sure I don't pull any fucking threads out. Let's get the keepers ready. Let's uh bring the spring down and over a little bit. Pull on this fucking handle. There's one in. Probably should do this with my fingers instead of gloves. Oh, done. That's incredible. Okay, snug. Wow. That's awesome. Okay, I really only got to take it out enough to turn it. The other spring in. See if this is tall enough. Out far enough. Nope. myself in the head with this thing. Fucking crowbar. Come on. I've seen many people make variations of these things. I tried to weld one to a rocker and didn't like it. Didn't like how it worked. Move this guy over. Is this? Yeah, heavy side up, heavy side up. Okay. Wow. This makes it pretty easy, guys. Let me just get my, I'll get my electric zinger on here. Just got to be weary of stripping it out. I got to check my air. I didn't let my compressor fill up all the way. It was making too much fucking noise. I wanted to start, see how my 
I literally welded this thing together. This is the, uh, you get this off eBay with a little piece of all thread and a nut and you put it on and you tighten it down and it pushes it down. You do your stuff and then you back it back out. It just takes a while. And I'm like, man, I got pieces of like roll bar tubing and other bullshit. So I just quick welded it to it so I can make another one, which is what's exciting about all this. Uh, yeah, okay. Don't lose track, you some bitch. Okay, hook up this guy, motor turns over. You give these guys a bop. Look at blowing out the duct tape. Cool. Let's get two more springs. Throw them right there. Oh, yeah, grab the magnet. Keep them on the magnet. Might have to uh, drop the valve. I must have nicked it. Might not have any fucking air. I'm a little out of my element. This is a new process. All right. Can I back this guy up a little bit? Maybe I should tack weld this so it can't move. Might be a good idea. I'm gonna tack weld this. I'll be right back. All right, guys. This is like the greatest
This shit's so annoying with that. I don't want to take it back out. I hit it. Knock it loose a little bit. I gotta remember to hammer them. There we go. Knock the keepers loose. They get a little stuck to the valve stem. There we go. That one in the trash, in the bin. There goes the glove. There we go. Oh, come down a little bit. There we go. And get my keepers. And pull the fucking e brake handle. Let's go down a little bit more. Make this easier on ourselves. Man, that's nice. You have some serious control with this foot and a half long pry bar on this thing. <laughs> I'm flat out impressed. That's my favorite way yet. Let's get two more springs. Do the last one on this side. See them. Threading my compression checker in here without the Schrader. I just threw it out. This thing gets used more like a valve spring tool than I do compression tests, so. In. Two more freshies. Dropped one. Got it. Okay. Back this guy out. Throw that away. Put the new one together. Drop it in. Flip the Milwaukee, get a better angle for you guys. Oh. Too close to the stem. Here. Douchebag in a hurry. Keepers off the magnet, ready to rock. Pull this guy, drop in the top one, push the bottom one. Oh man, that's nice. Ready in reverse. There we go. Just gotta crank the handle a few times. First, I want you to rip on that e brake. Fast and Furious reference, anyone? Drop the other one in. Set this guy up. Oh, nope, nope, that's too high. You're gonna pop the valve. There we go. There we go. Plenty, grab the keepers.
awesome. That's an entire side done already. Pop this guy. Let this out. I'm gonna take some pictures of this with my phone then. I'll be right back. It's awesome. All right, here we are, ready to do the other side. Wish I had a smaller magnet. This big one fucking struggles to get in here. Let's flip this guy in reverse. Okay, and like I said, I usually don't have a problem with these, but I'm going to point out one of my push rods. The top is slightly worn. One on each side. Take a look at, uh, well here, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to move it to the front. You see that? How the one is uh, a little bit worn out and the other one looks mint? I'll just put it right in the front. So if I ever have a problem, I'll know exactly uh, which one to go to first if this thing makes noise. Otherwise, I'm not gonna fucking touch it. Yep, and this one's a little bit more worn out. So I'm swapping the rocker over too. Just so if I have a problem, I'll just put used shit in there. But nine times out of 10, not an issue at all. Especially if you ignore it. That is not a problem. Oh, 
and I just pull these by hand just to make sure they're tight. I've had a few come loose and you think the motor's shot, you pull the motor and you pull a rocker cover off and one of them is fucking loose and you're like, I pulled the whole fucking motor out. Ugh. All right, that's it. Oh yeah, here. I'll put this super clean, put this pretty valve cover on here. Put the zinger back together. Zing it. Zippy zippy. And that's it, that's the end of the show.